So here it is, Ford's first serious electric vehicle. This one's got up to 480 horsepower, up to a 300 mile range, and as little as 3.5 seconds, zero to 60. Those are impressive numbers. But you know, it's got something else that's a little controversial for some, a Mustang nameplate. So we know it's got ties to Mustang and Ford's most famous performance coupe. Not only in name, but in styling cues too. You can see, you got these sweeping headlights here that look a lot like a Mustang. And back on the uh, rear end, you've got sequential LED taillights. Again, a Mustang cue. But clearly, it's a SUV. It's a very performance-oriented looking SUV, and it's about the same size and dimensions and proportions as a Porsche Macan or a Model Y, which is obviously one of its target vehicles. Now the starting price for the new 2021 Mustang Mach-E is $43,000. And with that, you get 260 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque, which is good for about a 5.8 second, zero to 60 time. Now you can get this vehicle with all wheel drive and you can get it with up to 480 horsepower if you get the GT Performance Edition version. Now that one's going to have 634 pound-feet of torque, so you know it's going to launch like any other fabulously high-performing electric vehicle, Teslas and others like that. And it is going to cost you 60 plus thousand dollars to get that version. But I think that's the model that performance fans who want to live up to the Mustang's heritage are going to want to order, and we'll see what percentage of those are ordered. It's not available, by the way, until this summer. This, this one's out now but it's gonna be several months before you can get that GT Performance version with the 480 horsepower. Let's talk about some of the design elements of this Mustang Mach-E, right? Besides the prominent pony, you've got galloping across the, well, non-existent non grill, remember? Most cars, they've got a grill up here, but this one doesn't have a radiator back there, so there's no grill. But more interesting is below this lower grill area, you see these active shutters. These will open to improve aerodynamics, which by the way, on this car is a, uh, coefficient of drag of about 0.28. They beat their uh, benchmark, they wanted 0.29, I think it's 0.285. And you've also got wheel choices that range from 18 to 20 inch. These are 19 inch wheels on this particular model right here. And I think it's interesting, they said that uh, a lot of the proportions in this car, the roof and the, uh, the roof to like the hip and the wheels and all along the side are pulled from the Mustang. And I think that is why not just because of the headlights and the taillights, but really the proportions of the car, they do look like a Mustang, and they did that on purpose. What's fascinating is this car's got a lot of interior space, more than you might think. You look at the car, and especially in this white color with the black roof, and you think this is the roof, right? Now this is a line in the roof. This is the roof, and you can see the difference here. This creates more headroom that we're gonna show you in a second in the back seat. So the car looks more swoopy and sporty because of this prominent, brighter colored roof line but the actual roof is higher for more functionality. Not, not something that you would think is rocket science, but a fairly brilliant design. Now let's talk about how you get into the Mustang Mach-E because like so many other things, it's not conventional. This might look familiar, like say, I don't know, an iPhone button, and sure enough, that's how you open the car. Pretty interesting when you think about it, and it's actually got an electronic motor assist thing. So it doesn't just release the door, as you probably noticed, it popped it out, it actually opens it for you. And then they've got this, again, very subtle grab handle here. So you don't see any handles on the side of this car. You know, concept cars, they never have door handles. This car is one of the first that is a production car, and there is no visible door handle anywhere on the outside of it. Yet it's very easy to open, as you just saw. Now let's get inside, check out, really, what is a very high-tech interior, too. You fire this thing up, just like most modern cars, by hitting a button. And you've got dual screens, which I really like, by the way. I mean, it's become very popular to have only one screen and have it in the middle with certain brands that we've all heard of out there. But Ford said, and I agree, that certain information you want very quick and easy to reference. And that means right in front of where you're already looking, which is the main area right in front of the driver. And that's what they do here. They provide the most important information, whether it's driver assist information or updates to nav, right in front of you. So you're not even having to turn your head to look into the middle of the vehicle. So let's talk about some of the interior features of this car. While it's often very different than a traditional vehicle in some elements, like this giant screen, it's also very standard forward in other ways. For instance, your rotary uh, transmission shifter here. That's become pretty much standard fare on every vehicle. You do have what's up here, a giant 
panoramic roof. I mean, ginormous. It's the full thing. Uh, hopefully it uh, stays pretty dark so you're not getting beat up on, uh, on ultraviolet rays. But I can tell you this, I've been driving it now for about an hour in bright sun and I haven't noticed anything. I'm not feeling like I'm, I'm heating up. One of the key things with every electric vehicle we know is that they tend to go to high-tech fans. So you can't just have a car that runs on electricity and is super clean. You also want to have a car that appeals to the tech, fe tech freaks, tech geeks out there like me. Uh, and we know that that's who's buying a lot of these cars. Ford knows this too, and so they've put together not only this giant touchscreen in the center that you see here, but ways to personalize this car. So you can type in your name, and then the car knows that you're Carl. You put in all the memory settings for where you want the thing to sit. This is my mem memory setting now. And of course, <laughs> we know someone else has been in this car recently, it looks like. Uh, I wondered why the name Doug was on there before. But anyways, um, you can do all these personalized things, right? And then the phone is your key to get into the car as well as your driving uh, ability. You don't have to have a key not only to get in the car but to drive it away. So no little card or credit card that you can use and no traditional key fob. Your phone does it all and that works on Android and Apple, which is cool because we know there's brands out there that only got one or the other. What that means is when you walk up to this car, all these settings in the vehicle start to remake themselves for you because they know it's you and they know who you are. So they're putting all the settings, whether it's your address, whether it's your stations, whether it's your seat, seat settings, everything starts to happen based on who you are because the car knew who you were as you walked up to it. And they've also got a nice volume knob. So there's no searching for volume like there are on so many other cars. They've got a knob that lets you turn that volume down right away. Love it when uh, car companies at least maintain some of the traditional controls. Now, like most electric vehicles, this one's important to know where you're gonna charge next. So there's a very advanced navigation system here, like a lot of the better vehicles now, that not only maps out where you're going and how long it's going to take you to get there, but where you're stopping and where you're charging on the way and how long you're stopping for. And it can do it in ways where, for instance, you could stop and only fill up from a quarter of energy to two thirds energy because it knows that's more efficient than trying to go all the way there in terms of battery charge and then stop in a certain amount of distance further on and get your next charge. So it will map out based on knowledge of where you're going and where the charge points are so that you can tell, you know, how long it's going to have how long you're going to have to stop at each of the charge points. So you can do all sorts of crazy things. You can, you know, turn on and off the uh, climate control here and of course they've got like the cool stuff here with the touch screen. You can hit your navigation. You can change the driver modes. The Mustang Mach-E equals driverish things. You can hit your different driver modes, engage, whisper, Pretty killer camera stuff too, right? But if you're driving, once you start driving, in my opinion, these screens should be the stationary screens and these screens should be the driving screens. In a perfect world, we'll get to a place where these screens are hardly referenced once you're moving because everything's up here where, you, where it should be. And when you're driving like I am, look, you can do uh, certain things, right? You can set your cruise, set the distance and follow that you're gonna do, set your lane keeping, And here we are, we're cruising. Lane keeping's on. These are all things you can do without having to, to look away from right in front of you because they're the immediate information that you need when you're driving a car. Got some speed bumps here. So that's, that's the great combination. A big infotainment screen when you're st stationary or maybe when you make the quick reference to music or nav and then the smaller display that's very dynamic and gives you the information you need when you need it. It avoids the information overload that happens when you're driving a vehicle and you know there's potentially too much stuff coming on, going on and too much pieces of information flying at you at the same time. Now you've got multiple driver's modes as previously mentioned. Engage, which is kind of medium. Whisper, which is kind of like you know your most comfort and quiet and relaxed. And because it's a Mustang, unbridled when you want to go fast. And you know what? I kind of want to go fast right now. So uh, let's, let's try this thing from a dead stop, punching it, and see how we do. Ready? I'm sure the camera will be completely stationary when all that electric engine torque hits, and electric motor torque hits instantly. Here we go. Oh, 
All right. Uh, we got up to about 50 miles an hour on a otherwise fairly quiet road, a frontage road here. So uh, that only took a couple seconds, and it, and it did it with some kind of cool engine noise, too, you might have heard in the background. So it, it's got that instant torque. Now, again, this is not the Performance GT version. This is a fairly mainstream model. It's not meant to be their fastest one. But as with all the cars with electric motors, you love that instant torque, and we saw it there. Same thing with steering, you know. That is all adjustable on an electric vehicle like this. Everything from the, the resistance and weighting to even the ratio can be changed based on the driver's mode and speeds you're going. And this particular car, I'm liking the size and diameter of the steering wheel. It's, it's big and fat. I, performance cars should never have tiny little steering wheel rims, and this one does not. Uh, and it also has pretty, pretty good feel. It's, uh, it's pretty precise and accurate. It doesn't feel floppy at all. So what's under the hood, people want to ask when you're driving your Mustang, right? Well, I don't know if you're going to want to show people necessarily what's under the hood. It's a very functional uh, cargo, cargo storage system, but it's not actually uh, anything exciting to look at. So this is, what, this is what you're going to show people when they ask what's under the hood of your Mustang Mach-E. Uh, but it is a functional, fun functional frunk, which, of course, a Mustang can't offer. So not bad. Of course, the other big advantage over your standard Mustang is cargo space behind the passenger cell, which is pretty substantial in this vehicle, as you can see. They've got some nice innovation too, including, well, it's not rocket science, but it is a nice feature where you want to raise or lower that cargo floor. It's fairly quick and easy, painless. Of course, it is a utilitarian vehicle, so let's check the rear seat utility of the vehicle, right? How, much, how well do I fit in this thing? Actually pretty impressive, really. This seat's adjusted for me, I'm about six feet, and here I am, I've got knee room, I've got feet room, and I've got massive headroom. The, the, the trick with the uh, bar, roof bar versus the actual roof out here, it worked. I've got, and, and apparently one of the Ford engineers who's 6'7", says he fits back here too. He's got a long torso, so I think it worked. Of course, you cannot sell a car at these price points for this audience without some fairly premium features as well, and not just big screens and high tech. You gotta have some nice materials. And, and right here, if you take a close look, the leather on these seats is pretty fabulous. It actually feels really, really supple. And of course, they're heated and cooled too. So you've got the premium thing covered as well if you're looking for not only earth-friendly, but uh, passenger-friendly and comfort-friendly. This one's got you covered. 2021 Mustang Mach-E, starting price $43,000, tops out around $60,000 for the all-out performance version. It'll do zero to 60 in three and a half seconds under extreme conditions when you have that performance version, but most of them are gonna be between like four and a half to five and a half seconds. And most of them are gonna cost probably around $50,000. This is targeted so clearly at the Tesla Model Y, their most successful model. Whether it's the looks, whether it's the price, whether it's the performance, that's the bogey they're going after. Having driven it, looked inside, checked out a lot of the features, the ergonomics, the interior design. I really love the integration of that screen with the uh, dedicated volume knob along with all the controls that are very easy and intuitive. It's gonna be an important car for Ford. They've pulled every lever, including the Mustang name, to try to make people buy this electric vehicle. We're gonna see if it's gonna work in the next year or so, but certainly you have to give Ford credit. Their dedication to making this vehicle successful and putting everything they've got into doing that is obvious. We'll know in a while whether it worked. This is Carl Brower for Motor Pro Media. Thanks for, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.